Chapter Three of A Small Boy and Others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by M. B. A Small Boy and Others by Henry James. Chapter Three. But I positively dawdle and gape here. I catch myself in the act so that i take up the thread of fond reflection that guides me through that mystification of the summer school which i referred to a little way back at the time when the summer school as known in america to-day was so deep in the bosom of the future the seat of acquisition i speak of must have been contiguous to the house we occupied i recall it as most intimately and objectionably near and carried on in the interest of those parents from new york who in villeggiatura under the queer conditions of those days with the many modern mitigations of the gregarious lot still unrevealed and the many refinements on the individual one still undeveloped welcomed almost any influence that might help at all to form their children to civility yet i remember that particular influence as one more noisy and drowsy and dusty than anything else as to which it must have partaken strongly of the general nature of new brighton a neighbourhood that no apt agency whatever had up to that time concerned itself to fashion and that was indeed to remain shabbily shapeless for years since i recall almost as dire an impression of it received in the summer of eighteen seventy five I seem more or less to have begun life, for that matter, with impressions of New Brighton. There comes back to me another, considerably more infantile than that of 1854, so infantile, indeed, that I wonder at its having stuck. That of a place called the Pavilion, which must have been an hotel sheltering us for July and August, and the form of which, to childish retrospect, unprejudiced by later experience, was that of a great greek temple shining over blue waters in the splendour of a white colonnade and a great yellow pediment the elegant image remained though imprinted in a child so small as to be easily portable by a stout nurse i remember and not less easily duckable i gasp again and was long to gasp with the sense of salt immersion received at her strong hands wonderful altogether in fact i find as i write the quantity the intensity of picture recoverable from even the blankest and tenderest state of the little canvas i connect somehow with the pavilion period a visit paid with my father who decidedly must have liked to take me about i feel so rich in that general reminiscence to a family whom we reached in what struck me as a quite lovely embowered place on a very hot day and among whom luxuries and eccentricities flourished together they were numerous the members of this family they were beautiful they partook of their meals or were at the moment partaking of one out of doors and the then pre-eminent figure in the group was a very big newfoundland dog on whose back i was put to ride that must have been my first vision of the liberal life though i further ask myself what my age could possibly have been when my weight was so fantastically far from hinting at later developments but the romance of the hour was particularly in what i have called the eccentric note the fact that the children my entertainers riveted my gaze to stockingless and shoeless legs and feet conveying somehow at the same time that they were not poor and destitute but rich and provided just as i took their garden feast for a sign of overflowing food and that their state as of children of nature was a refinement of freedom and grace they were to become great and beautiful the household of that glimmering vision they were to figure historically heroically and serve great public ends but always to my remembering eyes and fond fancy they were to move through life as with the bare white feet of that original preferred fairness and wildness this is rank embroidery but the old surface itself insists on spreading it waits at least with an air of its own 
the rest is silence i can extraordinary encumbrance even for the most doting of parents on a morning call but have returned with my father to our hotel since i feel that i must not only to this but to a still further extent face the historic truth that we were for considerable periods during our earliest time nothing less than hotel children between the far-off and the later phases at new brighton stretched a series of summers that had seen us all regularly installed for a couple of months at an establishment passing in the view of that simpler age for a vast caravanserai the hamilton house on the south long island shore so called from its nearness to the fort of that name which had fort lafayette the bastille of the civil war out in the channel before it and which probably cast a stronger spell upon the spirit of our childhood williams and mine at least than any scene presented to us up to our reaching our teens i find that i draw from the singularly unobliterated memory of the particulars of all that experience the power quite to glory in our shame of so entrancing an interest did i feel it at the time to be an hotel child and so little would i have exchanged any lot with that of any small person more privately bred we were private enough in all conscience i think i must have felt the rest of the year and at what age mustn't i quite have succumbed to the charm of the world seen in a larger way for there incomparably was the chance to dawdle and gape there were human appearances in endless variety and on the exhibition stage of a piazza that my gape measured almost as by miles it was even as if i had become positively conscious that the social scene so peopled would pretty well always say more to me than anything else what it did say i of course but scantly understood but i none the less knew it spoke and i listened to its voice i seem to recall very much as young edwin in dr beatty's poem listened to the roar of tempests and torrents from the nobler eminence of beetling crags and in exposure to still deeper abysses i cling for the moment however to the small part of our vredenburg summer as we were for long afterwards invidiously to brand it the more that it so plays its part in illustration under the light of a later and happier age of the growth when not rather of the arrest of manners and customs round about our birthplace i think we had never been so much as during these particular months disinherited of the general and public amenities that reinforce for the young private precept and example disinherited in favour of dust and glare and mosquitoes and pigs and shanties and rum shops of no walks and scarce more drives of a repeated no less than of a strong emphasis on the more sordid sides of the irish aspect in things there was a castellated residence on the hill above us very high i remember supposing the hill and very stately the structure it had towers and views and pretensions and belonged to a colonel whom we thought very handsome and very costumed as if befrogged and high-booted which he couldn't have been at all only ought to have been would even certainly have been at a higher pitch of social effect and whose son and heir also very handsome and known familiarly and endearingly as chick had a velvet coat and a pony and i think spurs all luxuries we were without and was cousin to the boys the de Capets, whom we had come to know at our school of the previous winter and who somehow doubtless partly as guests of the opulent chick hovered again about the field of idleness the de Capets, particularly in the person of the first-born louis had been of value to us or at any rate to me for though i was in common with my elders then unacquainted with the application of that word as i use it here what was my incipient sense of persons and things what were my first stirred observant and imaginative reactions discriminations and categories
but a vague groping for it. The de Carpes, again as more especially and impressively interpreted by the subtle Louis, enjoyed the preeminence of being European. They had dropped, during the scholastic term of 1853-54, straight from the lake of Geneva into the very bosom of Mr. Richard Pulling Jenks's select resort for young gentlemen, then situated in Broadway below 4th Street, and had lately been present at an historic pageant, whether or no celebrating the annals of the town or Coppet I know not, in which representatives of their family had figured in armour and on horseback as the barons, to our comprehensions, de coup or coup. Their father was thus of the canton de Vaux. Only their mother had been native among ourselves and sister to the colonel of the Castellations. But what was the most vivid mark of the brothers, and vividest on the part of the super-subtle Louis, was his French treatment of certain of our native local names, Ohio and Iowa, for instance, which he rendered, as to their separate vowels, with a daintiness and delicacy invidious and imperturbable, so that he might have been Chateaubriand declaiming Les Natchez at Madame Recamier's, O E O and E O A, a proceeding in him, a violence offered to his serried circle of little staring and glaring New Yorkers, supplied with the casual allowance of fists and boot toes, which, as it was clearly conscious, I recollect thinking unsurpassed for cool, calm courage. Those were the right names, which we owed wholly to the French explorers and Jesuit fathers, so much the worse for us if we vulgarly didn't know it. I lose myself in admiration of the consistency, the superiority, the sublimity of the not-at-all game-playing, yet in his own way so singularly sporting, Louis. He was naturally and incorruptibly French as so oddly i have known other persons of both sexes to be whose english was naturally and incorruptibly american the appearance being thus that the possession of indigenous english alone forms the adequate barrier and the assured racial ground oh the queer reversions observed on the part of latinized compatriots in the course of a long life the remarkable drops from the quite current French or Italian to the comparatively improvised native idiom, with the resulting effect of the foreign tongue used as a domestic, and the domestic, that is, the original American, used as a foreign tongue, or without inherited confidence. Louis de Coppet, though theoretically American and domiciled, was naturally French, and so pressed further home to me that sense of Europe to which I feel that my very earliest consciousness waked, a perversity that will doubtless appear to ask for all the justification I can supply, and some of which I shall presently attempt to give. He opened vistas, and I count ever as precious any one, every one, who betimes does that for the small, straining vision. Performing this office never so much, doubtless, as when, during that summer, he invited me to collaborate with him on the production of a romance which, il suffit fort, to get printed, to get published, when success, or in other words completion, should crown our effort. Our effort, alas, failed of the crown, in spite of sundry solemn and mysterious meetings. So much devoted, I seem to remember, to the publishing question, that others more fundamental dreadfully languished. Leaving me convinced, however, that my friend would have got our fiction published if he could only have got it written. I think of my participation in this vain dream as of the very first gauge of visiting approval offered to the exercise of a gift. Though quite unable to conceive my companion's ground for suspecting a gift of which I must at that time quite have failed to exhibit a single in the least phenomenal symptom it had none the less by his overtures been handsomely imputed to me that was in a manner a beginning a small start yet not wholly unattended with bravery louis de coppet i must add 
brought to light later on as far as i know no compositions of his own we met him long after in switzerland and eventually heard of his having married a young russian lady and settled at nice if i drop on his memory this apology for a bay-leaf it is from the fact of his having given the earliest or at least the most personal tap to that pointed prefigurement of the manners of europe which inserted wedge-like if not to say peg-like into my young allegiance was to split the tender organ into such unequal halves his the toy hammer that drove in the very point of the golden nail it was as if there had been a mild magic in that breath however scant of another world but when i ask myself what element of the pleasing or the agreeable may have glimmered through the then general the outer and enveloping conditions i recover many more of the connections in which forms and civilities lapsed beyond repair than of those in which they struggled at all successfully it is for some record of the question of taste of the consciousness of an aesthetic appeal as reflected in forms and aspects that i shall like best to testify as the promise and the development of these things on our earlier american scene are the more interesting to trace for their doubtless demanding a degree of the finer attention the plain and happy profusions and advances and successes as one looks back reflect themselves at every turn the quick beats of material increase and multiplication with plenty of people to tell of them and throw up their caps for them but the edifying matters to recapture would be the adventures of the higher criticism so far as there was any and so far too as it might bear on the real quality and virtue of things the state of manners the terms of intercourse the care for excellence the sense of appearances the intellectual reaction generally however any breasting of those deep waters must be but in the form for me of an occasional dip it meanwhile fairly overtakes and arrests me here as a contributive truth that our general medium of life in the situation i speak of was such as to make a large defensive veranda which seems to have very stoutly and completely surrounded us play more or less the part of a raft of rescue in too high a tide too high a tide there beneath us as i recover it of the ugly and the graceless my particular perspective may magnify a little wildly when it doesn't even more weirdly diminish but i read into the great hooded and guarded resource in question an evidential force as if it must really have played for us so far as its narrowness and its exposure permitted the part of a buffer state against the wilderness immediately near that of the empty the unlovely and the mean interposing a little ease didn't it interpose almost all the ease we knew so that when amiable friends arriving from new york by the boat came to see us there was no rural view for them but that of our great shame a view of the pigs and the shanties and the loose planks and scattered refuse and rude public ways never even a field path or a gentle walk or a garden nook in afternoon shade i recall my prompt distaste a strange precocity of criticism for so much aridity since of what lost arcadia at that age had i really had the least glimpse our scant margin must have affected me more nobly i should in justice add when old mrs l passed or hovered for she sometimes caustically joined the circle and sometimes during the highest temperatures which were very high that summer but flitted across it in a single flowing garment as we amazedly conceived one of the signs of that grand impertinence i suppose which belonged to dowagers dowagers who were recognized characters and free speakers doing and saying what they liked this ancient lady was lodged in some outlying tract of the many-roomed house which in more than one quarter stretched away into mystery but the piazza to which she had access was unbroken and whenever she strayed from her own territory she swam afresh into ours 
i definitely remember that having heard and perhaps read of dowagers who as i was aware had scarce been provided for in our social scheme i said to myself at first sight of our emphatic neighbour a person clearly used to exceptional deference this must be a perfect specimen which was somehow very wonderful the absolute first sight however had preceded the new brighton summer and it makes me lose myself in a queer dim vision all the obscurities attendant on my having been present as a very small boy indeed at an evening entertainment where mrs l figured in an attire that is still vivid to me a blue satin gown a long black lace shawl and a headdress consisting in equally striking parts of a brown wig a plume of some sort waving over it and a band or fillet whether of some precious metal or not i forget keeping it in place by the aid of a precious stone which adorned the centre of her brow such was my first view of the ferronniere of our grandmothers when not of our great-grandmothers i see its wearer at this day bend that burdened brow upon me in a manner sufficiently awful while her knuckly white gloves toyed with a large fan and a vinaigrette attached to her thumb by a chain and as she was known to us afterwards for a friend of my albany grandmother's it may have been as a tribute to this tie that she allowed me momentarily to engage her attention then it predominantly must have been that i knew her for a dowager though this was a light in which i had never considered my grandmother herself but what i have quite lost the clue to is the question of my extraordinary footing in such an assembly the occasion of a dance of my elders youthful elders but young married people into which really my mother as a participant must have introduced me End of chapter three